Hello again, Warriors. Torres the Warrior here. I haven't seen you guys in a while, but today I'm here with a new video about building your rotation from the ground up. This means we're going to start from the bottom, from the very base, and just add one ability on top of the other until we have a full rotation, break it down step by step. Now, this guide is directed mostly at people who maybe haven't picked up their warrior in a long time, just boosted a warrior, and you may have noticed I am on Arkaroth, my alt warrior, because Malganus is too crowded and all the people next to the target dummies uh, slows down my frame rate when I'm trying to record, but he should do nicely. So this guide should help you regardless of your gear. Again, it's targeted at people who possibly have boosted so they have very low item level. You may be asking, why Fury? Now, you probably, if you've looked at the forums, you've seen that, uh, you know, maybe Arms is better below this item level or below this level of crit. And, and for the most part, that's true. But, uh, so why should you go Fury off the start? And the reason for that is if you want to play Fury endgame, if that's your end goal, uh, to do high, which is, is the highest raid DPS of any of the warrior specs, so why start now? And that's because it's going to take a lot of practice. <laughs> if you haven't been playing it for a while, Fury gets pretty tricky and you're going to need all the practice you can get. It's also one of those specs that gets much easier to play with the more gear you get. So if you can learn to play it without the gear, once you get the gear, it's going to be even easier to play and you're just going to crush everything. So before we get started, let's get equipped for battle here. We're going to talk real quick about stats. If you just boosted, uh, whether you have the green still or you went out to Timeless Island and went around and grabbed all of the uh, Timeless stuff, uh, you're going to want to head over to the Reforger. And if you've got this add-on Reforged Light here, let's just, let's just get over there. Okay, here we are. So if you've got Reforged Light, you can just click on the guy. You can set the preset here to Fury and hit Calculate and then hit the show button and just click reforge and that should line everything up pretty nicely. So what it'll do is it'll, it'll, it'll get you here hitting expertise cap and that's the most important thing here. If not, if you don't have the add-on whatever, just fiddle around until you're hitting expertise capped and have besides that as much crit as you can possibly get. For your gems, honestly you could just throw crit in every slot. If you're really worried about it, you can go to Ask Mr. Robot and you know find out what the best gems are there as well as reforging if you don't have the add-on. So for weapons, we are Titan's Grip. Titan's Grip is the way to go right now. It's just the way Stormbolt works. Fairly sure it gives you two two-handers to start out with. Um, and if you're if you've dipped into LFR real quick, uh, one little trick you can do is you can click your portrait and set your loot specialization to arms, and that will just make it so you only get two-handers that drop, and all the same DPS gear still drops. But if you've maybe already run Flex or you've just got better stuff done maybe some normals. Uh, if you do have higher item level one-handers, like significantly higher item level one-handers and two-handers, they will end up doing more damage because it's just weapon damage and weapon item level is king. Once you do get good weapons, things are going to be great. For this video, if you have me smashing on the target dummy with my 572 item level gear and my heroic warforged weapon, it's gonna, it's, it's not really going to give you an accurate uh, representation of what you should expect with your fresh warrior. So we set up a special gear set here just for this occasion. This brings me down to 480, which is I think roughly what you you would be at coming out of just just freshly boosted or just freshly hitting 90. And so this has got a few pieces in here just to make sure I'm well over the hit and expertise cap. Uh, we got some lower item level weapons from Mogashan Vaults and from Throne of Thunder. We don't have the trinket on the Evil Eye because that cooldown reduction trinket changes things, so we're just not going to use that for now. And I've even got a couple pieces of the uh, the actual Transmog uh, aesthetic set from challenge modes uh, that are item level zero. All right, let's get started. Let's get to work here. So we're going to start off with just a couple of things, just some warrior mobility. Just getting around. I mean, one of the things, great things about being warriors, it is you're, you're pretty fast, you're pretty mobile. We, of course, have our signature charge that just closes the distance and gets us a little rage. You're pretty much going to want to start the fight off with that. We've also got Heroic Leap that gives us some damage and uh, leaps us wherever we want to go. Uh, Heroic Leap can also be used as an escape, so if you're <laughs> where you're not supposed to be and you want to get to where you're supposed to be very quickly, you can kind of just pick and plant yourself where you want to be very useful. You can use it for damage and against AoE you are going to use it for damage but for the most part right now let's stick to, to staying alive so we're going to use it for that. And as I go here 
with the rotation adding things on one by one, I highly recommend that you, every time I add something, you pause the video and play and sort of test out that rotation before adding the next thing. Make sure you know how to do it. Okay, let's start to build our rotation. So the base of the rotation, the, the bottom of the pyramid, the widest step is our bloodthirst. Bloodthirst is just, it's the core. It, it's the thing that everything else is built on. Now it's got a 4.5 second cooldown and warriors have a 1.5 second global cooldown, meaning that every third attack, every third global, is going to be a bloodthirst. That means pretty much the pattern for a fury warrior that you just have to remember is going to be bloodthirst, something, something, just again and again and again. That's pretty much what it is. Now those some things they change up and there are some rare occasions where you do skip a bloodthirst, but honestly if you that's something way more advanced and this is a basic video so we're just not even going to worry about that. And honestly if you just never skip a bloodthirst you'll be alright. But let's, let's go into a little bit more about what bloodthirst actually does. So it generates 10 rage. So most of our abilities cost us rage bloodthirst gives us rage, so that's a good reason to hit it. It gives us a little bit of health. It has double, double the normal chance to crit, so if we've got our 23%, 24% chance to crit here, that means we're going to have a 48% chance to crit with our bloodthirst. And now that's really important, because if we look at our enrage here, so it lists off a bunch of abilities. The important ones here are Bloodthirst and Colossus Smash, because those are the two that we use as Fury. So the critical strikes of Bloodthirst and Colossus Smash enrage you, generating 10 rage, increasing physical uh, damage done by 10%. So that's good. Now, so that's 10 extra rage and some extra damage. Now, if we look at our Mastery, our Mastery Unshackled Fury gives us uh, an even bigger damage multiplier whenever we are in rage. So we're triggering our mastery by getting crits with our bloodthirst. And the next and probably one of the most important things about it is that whenever we gain an enrage, if we find it here, where is it? There it is, raging blow. So becoming enraged enables one use of raging blow. And we'll get to raging blow next. It, basically it's your hardest one of your hardest hitting abilities and you can only use it when you've triggered it by gaining an enrage. So let's list off the things here one more time. We've got double the normal chance to crit. Critting with it gets us enraged. It gives us rage. Getting enraged gives us more rage. Enrage is to our mastery and it gives us a charge of raging blow which is one of our best attacks. So a lot of reasons to use Bloodthirst on cooldown. So let's just see what that looks like. I mean, it's going to be boring here to start, but we're building this rotation from the ground up, so from the start it's just going to look like this. Bloodthirst. Bloodthirst. Now, if you're if you're practicing along with me, uh, and you really want to skip this one, that's okay, because all it is is just hitting Bloodthirst. That's the basic of our of our rotation, the very base. So we talked about it already a little bit, let's add the next attack in here, and that is our Raging Blow. So a Mighty Blow that deals 228% weapon damage from each weapon, so both of your attacks, both of your weapons are attacking with this one, doing a pretty high amount of damage. Uh, and, but you need to be enraged to use it, so we have a limit of two charges, meaning we can hold on to one, and that's going to come in real useful later on. But let's just see what that, what that uses, what that looks like here. So we hit our Bloodthirst. We did, we've gotten enraged, we use our Raging Blow. We had our Bloodthirst, we need to turn down my add-on that is yelling at me because I have too much rage. There we go. <laughs> we'll go over why that makes that noise later. <laughs> so, we get our Bloodthirst, we get our Raging Blow, we hit our Bloodthirst, we hit our Raging Blow. We're getting lucky here, actually, usually we shouldn't be getting that much. We hit our Bloodthirst, Raging Blow, three in a row, that's pretty nice, considering how low my crit is right now. There we go, so Bloodthirst, we didn't get a Raging Blow, we don't use a Raging Blow, and again, we don't get one. So that's just how it's going to be, with a low crit, it, you know, it's that's, that's what it's going to play like. And that's also why the spec gets easier as you go, because you just have more Raging Blows to work with. So that's, that, that's, that's the next step. Now... Let's add another ability in here. So we have those gaps in there. We're hitting our bloodthirst. We're hitting our our bloodthirst. We're hitting our raging blow when we get the proc. And the other rest of the time, we're just kind of waiting around. So we're going to go ahead and fill those. And we're going to fill those with wild strikes. So we hit our bloodthirst. We hit our one, two wild strikes. That's the pattern. It's bloodthirst one, two, and three for the other abilities. We're back to bloodthirst again. 
Now look what it just did there. We got our blood surge proc. And it's what that lets us do is that lets us hit bloodthirst and that lets us hit three wild strikes in a row before bloodthirst is back. And the reason for that is is that our blood surge proc here let's go ahead and find it. Blood surge so your, age, your bloodthirst hits have a 20% chance, there's another reason to hit bloodthirst on cooldown, have a 20% chance of making your next three wild strikes free, so they're not costing any rage, and reducing their global cooldown to one second. So instead of one and a half seconds, they're one second, meaning you can fit three in between your bloodthirsts. So let's go ahead and let's practice that a little more. We hit our bloodthirst, we hit our one, two wild strikes, we hit our bloodthirst again, one, two wild strikes, bloodthirst. We get three wild strikes here. Now what just happened there is that we got a raging blow and a blood surge at the same time. We used our blood surge and we saved our raging blow charge in order to use two raging blows in a row. It just happened there again. So one, two raging blows in a row. We're getting actually really lucky here. Normally you don't get this many procs, but you know sometimes the planets align and you're able to do that combo three times back to back. Didn't get it that time, so we're just going to use our Wild Strike and our Raging Blow. We got another Blood Surge proc. One, two, three. Bloodthirst, Raging Blow, Wild Strike. Bloodthirst, Wild Strike, Wild Strike. Bloodthirst. We got our Blood Surge proc again here. We Bloodthirst. We got our two Raging Blows back to back. We Bloodthirst, and we just hit our two Wild Strikes. Bloodthirst again, Raging Blow, then a Wild Strike, Bloodthirst, and then there's another. So you get the idea here of how it is. And this sort of brings in our first little priority system here. So, and these are not like a always Bloodthirst before, Raging Blow before, Wild Strike, because you notice when I get the, the Blood Surge proc, I am Wild Striking before using Raging Blow. So there's no direct order by abilities of what you should be using over anything else, but there's an order of combinations. So let's see if we can bring up my Bartender here. I had a special bar set aside for it. So this is, this is just Bartender, the add-on I use for my action bars, and we're just using a very large bar here to sort of show how let's put this put Colossus Smash aside for now. How things are gonna line up here. So our best combination, the one that's gonna do the most damage between our bloodthirst is going to be a bloodthirst, raging blow, raging blow combination. Going into our next bloodthirst, going into our next combo. So that's gonna be the best, but that requires you to have two raging blow charges. So most of the time uh, you're just going to be getting a Bloodthirst, your one Raging Blow, then you're finishing with your Wild Strike, going into your next Bloodthirst and your next combination. So that's, uh, that, that's a different one, but the second best thing uh, to use between our Bloodthirsts here is our Blood Surge proc, which is just three Wild Strikes in a row. So that's going to do more damage than our Raging Blow Wild Strike combination. So we have top priority is two Raging Blows, second priority is our Blood Surge proc, getting three Wild Strikes, and our third priority is our uh, Bloodthirst Raging Blow Wild Strike combination. And of course, if you don't get an Enrage, we have our Bloodthirst Wild Strike Wild Strike combination. So let's start again here. Let's hit our Bloodthirst, hit our Raging Blow, oh, and we don't have enough Rage to use a Wild Strike, so we had to wait for rage there. So that, that brings up the question of what do I do when I run out of rage? And the answer is to use a filler. Now, the more gear you get, the more raging blows you're using in there, the less fillers that you'll have to use, but it, you still will end up using them every now and then. So let's, let's look at some of the fillers we've got. So we've got impending victory. This is our talent here uh, that we take. And we can use it because if we look at Wild Strike is 30 rage and Impending Victory is only 10 rage. So if we've got anywhere between 10 and 29 rage and we can't use a Wild Strike, we have nothing else procced, we can throw a, an Impending Victory in there to get some extra damage. If you have absolutely no rage, there's a couple other options. We can use our Battle Shout because it gives us 20 rage, or we can use our Heroic Throw because it does a little bit of damage. Not very much, but a little bit. It's better than none. Now, there's one more filler here that we can use, and it's kind of a situational one because it is Bladestorm. So if we have any situations in the fight where we need to AoE, and we're going to be using Bladestorm for that, 
we obviously then can't use it as a filler. But uh, if there are no situations like that, it can be, and it requires a macro. So as how that goes, it's just that you know it's a filler. You've got no rage. You've got nothing else to use. You hit that blade storm in there, and then as soon as your bloodthirst comes back on, we hit our bloodthirst and it, to cancel uh, blade storm, and then go back into our next bloodthirst. So we should get about four ticks of blade storm in there. And how that's how we do that? Because just hitting bloodthirst normally doesn't cancel your blade storm. We have a macro for it, so we type slash macro. And on our bloodthirst, we have there's a bunch of extra things in here, but the important things here are the hashtag show tool tip. It is what that does if we go to choose icon here, if we select the question mark, uh, and we have this hashtag show tool tip in here, it will show the bloodthirst button, it will show bloodthirst going on cooldown, and it will show the tool tip for bloodthirst. Okay, so we have enough tools now to sort of run our basic rotation got our bloodthirst, we've got our raging blow, we've got our fillers, and we've got our wild strikes with our blood surge procs and just using them regularly. So that's kind of that's sort of the foundation. Everything else on top of this is is extra fancy bonus stuff. And there's a lot of it, and it's very important, but this is this is the core of what you're going to be doing the majority of the time. Alright, so let's get really fancy. So this is where things start to get complicated. Because right now you're probably wondering, well, this, this seems kind of easy. This isn't so bad. Um, so this is where Colossus Smash comes in. Now, Colossus Smash gives you a massive damage boost for a short time. So it lasts 6 seconds, has a 20 second cooldown. Now is what it lets you do, it lets you ignore all of the target's armor. It, it, it hits decently hard, but its main its main effect is the fact that you ignore its armor. You're probably kind of wondering, like, well, how much damage does it actually give me? So, bosses usually have around, I think, close to 40% armor. So, uh, I, I know the number it comes out to after putting up st stacks of sunders or armor reductions or what, whoever's doing that on the boss. It comes out to about 32%, so about a third of the damage that you're doing all of the time is being stopped by armor that's on the boss. That means that if you're ignoring armor, that's not a 32% damage increase, that's a like more like a 50% damage increase because you're only normally doing 66% of your damage, so you're gaining that last 33%, that's a 50% damage increase. So that's huge. And it only lasts for six seconds, so that's four global cooldowns that you can fit under each CS. Now, the last global cooldown goes off pretty much right as CS wears off, if you're having trouble with that. Okay, so we go into Interface, and we go to Combat, and here we say Combat Lag Tolerance. If you crank this up, if you turn it up to whatever your MS is, I have it set to 280 because that's what it is on my other server. Uh, if you turn it up to that, or maybe even a little bit higher, it should not happen where you lag just enough that it doesn't let you get that last global in under Colossus Smash. So if you turn that up set properly, you should be able to fit all four under that CS most of the time. Now let's bring back up our little little action bar here that we had earlier. We've got our normal rotation here, so we've got our bloodthirst, our wild strikes, and our bloodthirst, and our raging blow when we get a proc, and then wild strike, and then bloodthirst again. So it was where we want to fit Colossus Smash is always going to be right here. And the reason for that is, if you look here, we've got one, two, three, four globals under this uh, Colossus Smash, whereas if we put it here, or rather, three of those are other abilities and one is a bloodthirst, whereas if we put it here, we've got one, two, three, four, so we've got two bloodthirsts and two other abilities. Now, the main reason that we don't want to have two bloodthirsts in there, we want those two other attacks, is because if everything goes right, we could get enough Raging Blow procs to fit all of them in there. So let's see, yeah, let's look at, look at that. Let's get a few of these out here. Alright, so we could potentially get this to happen. So, and this is where, where we're going to bring up like a special filler, because you're probably wondering like, well, how is this even possible? I guess if everything goes just right. So if we get our, our Bloodthirst to crit, and we get our Colossus Smash here to crit, and then we use a Raging, so we got 
two of those critting, so we got two charges of Raging Blow. Then we use our Raging Blow, so we've got one charge, and we Bloodthirst get another crit, so we've got two charges. So this lets us fit three Raging Blows, which is hitting much harder than either your Bloodthirst or your Wild Strike in there, and that's uh, that's ideally what you want to happen. So that's why you always want to Colossus Smash directly after a Bloodthirst, and never before. Now, let's talk about two things, sort of abilities that we use pretty much exclusively under Colossus Smash. One of them is a a filler, just like before, but it's it's one that's that's kind of too good just to waste all the time, and that is our uh, Berserker Rage. Berserker Rage just gives you an enrage, it's just like getting one from a crit, but you just get it automatically whenever you press the button. It's a 30 second cooldown, so it generates 10 rage, increases physical damage done by 10 percent. It's, it's an enrage in every way. So, is what we want to do is if, say, probably our Colossus Smash doesn't crit here, so we get our Bloodthirst crit, Colossus Smash doesn't crit, we use our Raging Blow from that first Bloodthirst crit, we hit Bloodthirst again, we get another crit, we hit our Raging Blow again, but since we didn't have the crit charge from before, from the Colossus Smash, this here would be a a Wild Strike, because we don't have that charge. However, if we have our Berserker Rage ready, then we can hit Berserker Rage, giving us an extra charge of Raging Blow, so we can use that Raging Blow immediately. Also, another good time to save it for in is if you get unlucky and this Bloodthirst doesn't crit, and you hit the Colossus Smash and it still doesn't crit, that's definitely when you're going to want to use Berserker Rage, because with the Colossus Smash up, you really want to be enraged for that, because remember, the enrage is our mastery, so it's giving us a really big uh, damage boost. It's going to be multiplied with that armor reduction. So that's definitely when we're going to want to use it to get this Raging Blow in there, if any, even if we have like a charge from before. So that's kind of our filler in there, and our other ability that we use pretty much only under Colossus Smash is one of our hardest hitting attacks that we have, probably one of the hardest hitting attacks in the game period right now, and that is Stormbolt. Now, if we look at Stormbolt here, so uh, we have our other super hard hitting attack. We've got our our 228% weapon damage from Raging Blow. We've got Wild Strike, decent decent strength, offhand only, so but it's 230%. You know, we got our Bloodthirst is 135%, uh, Colossus Smash 175. So those are those are pretty good multipliers uh, against things that are permanently immune to stuns like bosses. Stormbolt is a 500% weapon damage, so it hits insanely hard. And I've I've with good gear, I've this frequently hits for well over a million. And during your burst with all of your trinkets and potions and everything going, I've seen it I've seen it get very close to three million damage just from one uh, one Stormbolt hit because it does hit with both the main hand and the off hand for 500% weapon damage, and with its cooldown is 30 seconds and the cooldown on Colossus Smash is 20 seconds, they don't quite line up, so ideally is what you're going to be doing is just Stormbolting on every other Colossus Smash because just the multiplier, 50% uh, basically extra damage you're getting from that Colossus Smash is going to be make it worth holding back 10 seconds on your Stormbolt. So th what that's going to do is going to make our CS window every other time look like this. We're getting Bloodthirst, Colossus Smash, Stormbolt, uh, Bloodthirst again, and then getting our two Raging Blows. And this makes it so we don't have to have our Colossus Smash crit in order to get this sort of golden combo here. So, uh, we're just relying on the Bloodthirsts, which have the double crit chance anyway. So this makes this pretty much what you're going to be doing almost every single time during a CS. So let's add let's add those in there and let's have a look at how that goes. It's actually let's just keep this for reference and put it up there. All right. So we're gonna go in, hit our bloodthirst, hit our colossus smash, hit our stormbolt. Now we're back to bloodthirst. And we get our two raging blow combos, just like we have up there. Bloodthirst again, raging blow, wild strike, bloodthirst again, two wild strikes. Bloodthirst again. We've got nothing, so let's go ahead and use our Bladestorm in there. Hit Bloodthirst. We got our Colossus Smash back. And then we're going to use that filler in there to get that extra Raging Blow with the uh, uh, Berserker Rage. Back to Bloodthirst. We got two Raging Blows. Bloodthirst again. We've got our Blood Surge proc. Bloodthirst again. We got our two Raging Blows in there. 
Bloodthirst again. We're going to Colossus Smash. We've got Stormbolt back up. Back to Bloodthirst. And we've only got one Raging Blow this time, so we're going to fill it out with a Wild Strike. Bloodthirst. Blood Surge proc. Bloodthirst. Raging Blow. Wild Strike. Bloodthirst. Wild Strike. Wild Strike. Bloodthirst. we got our Colossus Smash. Our Raging Blow Charge. We've got our extra one in there, so hopefully we get another crit here. And yes, we did. So we got our three Raging Blows under that Colossus Smash. So that's that's pretty much how the rotation goes. That's that's the core of it. There's really only one more thing to add to it. But if you can practice that and get that down, you've you've you're you've you will be a good Fury Warrior. There's no no question about it. All right. So the last ability to talk about here, uh, as far as our basic rotation goes, is probably one of the most complex things we've got because it has sort of a dual usage um, but it's also something very basic and very core to playing a warrior and that is our heroic strike so heroic strike it costs the same rage as it's 30 rage so it's the same as your wild strike but it does less damage and the reason for this is that it uh, it can be used off of the global cooldown so if we go here we can hit our Bloodthirst, which we don't have enough rage for a heroic strike yet here, so let's hit swing it a few times here. So we hit our Bloodthirst and we can heroic strike immediately after without waiting for the global cooldown. Same thing with like Raging Blow, we can use it at the same time if we want, uh, if we've got the rage for it. So it's completely separate from your normal rotation. And this means we've kind of got two modes uh, for our heroic strikes. So the first mode is our conservative mode here, are sort of guarding guarding our rage from capping. And that just means that when we get to about 90 rage or so, we want to hit our heroic strikes so we don't cap, because every rage gained past that cap is wasted and we can't turn it into more damage. And this is the mode we're going to be in most of the time. The other mode for our heroic strike is our CS mode, which is our dumping mode. And this is where we're, we're kind of playing the opposite, whereas before you're trying to keep your rage as high as you can without letting it go over the cap. During CS you're doing the opposite of that. You're trying to keep your rage as low as you can uh, without making it so you don't have the rage to use the next ability in your regular rotation. So that means hopefully only leaving 10 rage over for a raging blow which will happen most of the time. It's just the way our Colossus Smash lines up. And the reason for that, of course, is just to dump as much rage as we can, get as many heroic strikes in under that CS where they're getting that 50% or nearly 50% damage boost in there. And it's also important to note that uh, a, although Wild Strike does more damage than a Heroic Strike, a Heroic Strike under CS does more damage than a Wild Strike not under CS. So this also changes our combinations that come directly before and directly after our Colossus Smash. Let's look at that real quick. Okay, so here we have our combination coming directly before the, the CS combination. So each, each Bloodthirst and two falling two abilities is its own combination. So we've got our Bloodthirst, we got the crit from that, we get our Raging Blow and we finish with a Wild Strike. And that's, that's fine. If we're at high rage, that's good. If now the problem here comes when if we're at low rage. Now, if you've if you've been playing conservatively, uh, you hopefully won't be at low rage at this point. But if you're if you're below like 40 or 50 rage here, you may want to consider using a filler that is cheaper than Wild Strike. So even though you have the rage to hit that Wild Strike, you may want to hit a heroic throw, maybe even a battle shout. Um, if you don't have any Raging Blow procs at all, so you would otherwise have to use two Wild Strikes, this is definitely a situation where you'd want to use uh, maybe one Wild Strike and a filler, or if you've got it off of cooldown, hit your Blade Storm. Blade Storm's usually a pretty good decision here, because remember, your, your basic auto attacks do continue during Blade Storm, so you're building Rage for that whole time and not spending any. So we make sure we've got good amount of Rage going into our Colossus Smash, so we hit our Bloodthirst to get even more Rage. We should be pretty close to cap at this point. We use our Colossus Smash, which is free, and then from this point on is where we're going to mash the crap out of Heroic Strike if we've got a good amount of Rage for it. It's because we're using our Stormbolt that is also free, we're using our Bloodthirst that gains us Rage, and we're using ideally two Raging Blows that only cost 10. So pretty much for your whole rotation here, there's only 20 that needs to be saved for your actual rotation, and the rest of it should be mashed into Heroic Strike. 
That means, though, after we hit this bloodthirst here, so coming off of our Colossus Smash combinations, we're usually put pretty low on rage. So be ready to use a filler here as well. Now, Heroic Strike I mentioned is what's going to make you from a good Fury Warrior to a great Fury Warrior, what's also what can completely break you as a Fury Warrior. So, if you, say, hit a Heroic Strike when you weren't supposed to, so you, you didn't get your, you got really unlucky here and you don't have a Berserker Rage ready for this, so you have to hit this Wild Strike here, you need to, you need to be able to see that coming. You need to be able to sort of anticipate that. So if you know, if you see here that you, you you don't have any crits going into this bloodthirst, you need to be prepared for this bloodthirst to not crit, and you need to heroic strike accordingly, which means holding one back so you can hit this wild strike in there. That's going to be like maybe a, a a minor DPS gain, but what can really screw you is that say everything does go properly, and you actually manage to heroic your heroic strike yourself below that ten rage, and you can't hit your raging blow on time. That's going to crush your damage completely. Also the same sort of thing if you're not really paying attention to your rage, so you're not at necessarily a high or low rage here, and you decide to hit a heroic strike in here just before the CS goes off, you're going to hit your Colossus Smash. You'll get your full combination off, because these things don't cost very much rage, but if you're paying attention to your heroic strike then, you still don't have the rage to use it, so you're only getting maybe one, maybe two heroic strikes in under this combination instead of the four that you should be going for. So that's another huge chunk of damage that you're missing by not having the rage for your Colossus Smash because you heroic striked earlier when you shouldn't have. There's also the opposite of that, where you know you get a lot of good procs in a row, say you're getting a bunch of uh, blood surges, you're getting plenty of raging blows, and it's not necessarily during Colossus Smash, you're not paying attention as much to your heroic strike, and you rage cap, and then you rage cap for a, like a significant amount of time, or more than once, and you have a bunch of you know auto attacks swinging into the dummy, so that's a pair of auto attacks there, one missed. Jeez, I keep missing. So, you know, your, your auto attacks are generating a lot of rage, so you get, you get a few, like, heroic strikes worth of rage that you just aren't, you're never going to get back, that are wasted because you, you didn't heroic strike when you should have. And this is the one part of the rotation that really is just going to take practice. If you, if you haven't been pausing the video until now to, to practice when I add a new ability, this is the time to do it. This is the time to go to the target dummy and, and just practice this. So let's do the full thing here. I think we talked about battle shouting before and then charging in. So let's do that to get some range to start with. Let's hit our Colossus Smash. Now we're going to hit Heroic Strikes during this Colossus Smash. And then we got our Stormbolt in there and then our two Raging Blows. So we were able to get pretty much as many as we wanted. Now here's what I just what I talked about where we ran out of Rage right after the Colossus Smash because we dumped a bunch of Rage into the Heroic Strikes. We're bloodthirst now. We're out again, so we're gonna blade storm there. I hit it a little slow. You gotta be ready for that. We got our colossus smash. Now we don't have a stormbolt ready here. We're gonna have to use our blood search proc under that CS, which is not necessarily terrible because uh, you know we that since it's free, we are able to get a few extra heroic strikes in there, or a extra heroic strike rather. Here we're sort of running out of gas, but we're right about to hit that and. Here, here we're also at the point now where we're just not going to be able to get any heroic strikes and are very many in under that CS. We only are able to sneak one in there at the end. And it's very difficult to talk about the rotation and do it at the same time. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. <laughs> and sort of another problem I had there is, again, a feel thing. So this is why people say that you need 30% crit to play Fury is because the spec will feel much better once you get there because you're getting more bloodthirst crits, you're getting more raging blows, you have more rage to spend on heroic strikes, so it's much more forgiving. And since I'm used to playing with that gear, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a transition for me. Now that's pretty much everything you need to know for the basic single target rotation. Real quick here we're just going to cover the AoE rotations, so those are pretty simple. Our rotation is pretty much as normal. So we're going to Bloodthirst, but instead of hitting our Wild Strikes, we're going to hit our Whirlwind until we have as many stacks as there are extra targets. So we're going to Whirlwind, Whirlwind. we got a bunch of stacks now. We're going to hit our Raging Blow, Whirlwind, Bloodthirst, Whirlwind, 
Raging Blow. Bloodthirsters, two extra targets. We're going to fit two Whirlwinds in between Raging Blows. So we do two Whirlwinds, Bloodthirst again. Whirlwind, rage, uh, Raging Blow, Whirlwind, Bloodthirst, Whirlwind, Raging Blow. So that's pretty much how it's going to go. So we want to just get just enough stacks to hit all the targets there. If there's four or more, obviously you're going to stack that to three, which is the maximum, before hitting your Raging Blow. And that's that's pretty much just the, uh, the rotation there. Now, if there's a whole bunch of things, you may get to the point to where... Uh, you're probably going to rage starve yourself doing it, but if you if you have the rage for it, you can just keep hitting whirlwind and ignore your bloodthirst. That's usually if there's like if it's an actual AOE pack, like there's eight or more things, there's a bunch of stuff. And of course, in there, just hitting your bladestorm on cooldown. Make sure you have something targeted with bladestorm and you're close enough to it to melee swing, because you will be gaining rage from those melee hits as well as additional damage. Uh, it's also good to uh, hit your colossus smash on it. Especially if you're like there's a main target and a cleave target, because your your blade storm's going to do more damage to that specific one with uh, the CS on it. Also, you typically won't have the rage for it unless you're only fighting maybe two targets and you're just kind of cleaving. You can use uh, the namesake, which is cleave, instead of heroic strike. So you're just basically doing your basic rotation here. You're fitting one whirlwind, one raging blow, bloodthirst, whirlwind. Raging below, I got some extra rage so I can dump that into a cleave. So that's that's pretty much the only use for that. Uh, the very last thing to talk about here is execute, which I need to go to the target dummies that have that. So let's go over there. All right, so we're here at the executable target dummies, and let's have a look at what execute does. So you notice here, execute has no weapon damage percentage for it. All it has is a number. And that's because our execute scales differently from uh, off of strength than the rest of our abilities. And it scales much, much steeper. Meaning that the more strength you have, the your your all of your abilities are going to get stronger, but execute will get even stronger than the rest of them. Now what this means is that most of the time, you're pretty much just going to replace where you would be using Wild Strike with Execute. Because it hits harder than a Wild Strike, but it still doesn't really hit harder than a Raging Blow. Now, here we see that it is hitting harder, and that's because I have a the strength prop going on from my Thox tail tip, and that's what you're gonna have to look out for. So, when you have a strength prop going or a strength potion going, you're going to change your priority a bit. You're pretty much just gonna be hitting bloodthirst and execute. And in fact, if you have bloodthirst and colossus smash up, you're just keep executing until you run out of gas and skip your bloodthirst because with all that extra strength, Execute becomes your hardest hitting ability uh, save for your Storm Bolt, which you're still going to be using after Colossus Smash, even in the Execute phase. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like here. So let's get our Bloodthirst, our Colossus Smash, let's get our Storm Bolt. We don't have any procs, so we're going to go ahead and just hit our Raging Blow combos like normal. And hit our Bloodthirst our Raging Blow, our Execute, Bloodthirst, Raging Blow, Execute, Bloodthirst. Then let's hit our Colossus Smash, and let's go ahead and hit our Strength Potion, and let's hit, let's just mash that Execute button. There we're getting three, four hundred K Execute crits here. So, that's pretty much what you just gotta look out for. That's the Execute phase. So, without procs, Play like normal, use Execute where you would normally use a Wild Strike, so you're pretty much just using Bloodthirst, Raging Blow, and Execute. If you do have Strength procs going, so either you've used a Potion or your Trinket has procced, uh, if you don't have an add-on to proc your Trinket, or if you don't have an add-on to track your Trinket procs, uh, I recommend getting one, it's going to help you a lot during this phase. And if you, that happens, you're pretty much just going to mash Execute uh, until you don't have that bonus anymore. So. Uh, also, you're usually not hitting Heroic Strike during this phase because uh, you don't want to risk not being able to use an Execute. The last thing to add in here is our cooldowns, which has a lot to do with our burst, but it's pretty simple. We've got Recklessness and we've got Skull Banner. They help each other a lot. They're on the same cooldown because one of them gives you more crit and the other one makes your crits do more damage. So pretty much just macro them together. 
our macro. So hashtag show tooltip, just like before, slash cast recklessness, slash cast skull banner. So that's lines one, two, and three. That's all it is. And you just hit that pretty much right at the start of the fight, and then every time that you can from then on. And if possible, try to time it so you have it at the start of the fight and also at the end of it, because it's, it's really good to use that right when you're hitting all those really heavy executes. That's all for this guide, hopefully. You were able to learn how to play your Fury Warrior all in one go here. If you feel at all lost, just kind of go back through, find out the point where you sort of got lost, practice that rotation, and then move on one by one from there. And of course, for more warrior goodness, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I have a lot of good warrior things on there. Also, I am now on the Commanding Shout podcast. I have a link down in the description to where you can go listen to that. It's just a podcast all about warrior stuff. It's got me and uh, just a few other people, either from YouTube or just from the podcasting community. We've got Tangenstein from Tank Spot. We've got Navox. We've also got Agathon from Agathon's Rage Bar here on YouTube. And we've got the host Dunlock from the Area of Effect podcast and God knows how many other podcasts that guy runs now. Jeez. All right, I think that finally wraps up this video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you warriors next time.